Hello and welcome to day three, the morning session of the 2021 World Para Athletics European Championships from the Zajnitsa Stadium in Bidigos in Poland. Almost halfway through these European Championships as we blast our way towards Tokyo, kicking off in late August. Lovely sunny weather, as you can see, a slight breeze, nothing really to talk of. 21 degrees Celsius is the expected maximum today. Rain and inclement conditions on the first day, wonderful weather on day two. And day three promises to be a wonderful day weather-wise as well as on the track and field as well. And talking of the track and field, all gets underway in the coming minutes. We'll have field events getting long jump T36 and 12 finals taking place in this morning session. Eight of those will be on the field and four of those will be on the track. Alicia German goes into women's 200 meters T47. The Local favourite, or one of them, after setting a championship record yesterday, but it all gets underway with the men's long jump, T36. Only four to go in this one. And what a past couple of days we've had. Russia, who were at the top of the medal table. Of course, Poland, who were the host this time round, were top of the tree after Berlin 2018. They'll be hoping they can do likewise. Just look to the left there, you can see that slight breeze that'll be favoring these athletes, that windsock just behind them. Yesterday, it picked up a little bit more than what it was on the opening day. Nothing really to talk of on that opening day. Yesterday, it was behind the long jumpers in the morning session, and it looks as though it's gonna be similar in this one as well. Twelve finals in the morning, 19 finals taking place in the evening session. Strap yourselves in, because I've got absolutely no doubt at all we'll find ourselves with European Championship and World Records over the course of those 31 finals and the preceding heats for the track events as well. The big shame about this event is that there are no spectators allowed in to any sporting event in Poland at the present time. There's no media there at the venue either. Everyone missing out on the chance to see these athletes. Alexander Litvinenko, who's the reigning champion from Berlin three years ago. Anastasius Petropoulos of Greece took bronze in 2018. Marian Petri of Romania, the former Para Para Lithuanian Athletics debut was in 2009. And look, there's a name we know. Bronze in the 2016 Paralympic Games. He took silver in this event three years ago. All four of these athletes went in the 100 meters yesterday as well. You will find in Para Athletics, especially in the 35 to 38 track category that many of them who run in the 1 and 200 will also go in the long jump. And as is the case here, that's a 100% guarantee with this event. Litvinenko will be the first to go, the Ukrainian. And what an athlete he is. Thirty-one years of age from Odessa. Made his senior debut back in twenty eighteen in Paris. As he looks to defend the title he won in Berlin three years ago.
year after he won that European Championship gold, he finished with a bronze medal in Dubai in the World Championships. So this is the coordination impairment category. T36. And Lipvinenko, you don't need me to tell you, he's ready to go. So his defence begins. And that looked like a clean jump. White flag given. says the most influential person in his career has been his mother. How true that is of many. Good form, good jump. Right onto the board, and he lost a few centimetres. As we await his first mark. At the same time as the long jump is going on, the women's club throw F32 is also set to get underway. Always busy in the opening stages of the morning session in the field. Five going in this one. Christina Kalman, you can see there, of Hungary. Who finished fifth three years ago we'll get the athletes underway this is the seated throw category so in the club throw they'll take all six of their throws chance to reposition themselves after the first three now this is a great story Alia Issa who is born in Greece her father fled Syria and she's looking to make the Paralympics this year on the refugee Paralympic team Anna Muzikova broadens in 2018 from the Czech Republic and Baba Rabaha of Latvia, her debut in 2019. She finished in ninth position at the World Championships. Now from the Ukraine, rounding up the field, Anastasia Moskalenko, who is the reigning champion in the club throw and shot put. She bronze in 2019 in Dubai. She got one gold there at those championships in the shot put as well. So she will be the one they will all be chasing down. But it will be Kalman who first to throw. Back in 2016, she finished in, in fourth position in the Europeans in Grisetto. So close to a medal. She's finished fourth, fifth. She'll be hoping to work her way up the ladder as we head back to the long jump T36. Marian Petria of Romania. I can tell you Litvinenko with his first was 551. Petropoulos of Greece who was up next 479 for him. And Marian Petria of Romania will be next to go followed. Last but not least by Roman Pavlik, who picked up a bronze in the 100 metres yesterday. The record at 5.93 is the World European and Championship record. It was set in Grisetto in 2016 by Russia's Evgeny Tursunov. As Petria heads down the runway. Maybe lost a little bit on the board there. Looked to come up a bit short. Lifetime best of 4.09 for Marian Petria. You can see there, he lost a good 30 centimetres by not getting himself up onto the board. On, 
So Petria 386, it puts him in third position as Roman Pavlik sets himself. Bronze at the Paralympics in 2016. Gold, the Euros in Swansea in 2014. Silver at the last in Berlin. He did win the World Championship gold in 2017 in London. So he's always amongst the medals. As I mentioned a moment or two ago, he's amongst the medals yesterday as bronze in the 100 metres. The Ukraine strongly represented at these championships, as I suspect they will be in Tokyo come late August. I said, Pavlik just waiting for the OK to jump when that orange cone will be taken away. 37 years of age, the man from Lviv. Made his debut back in 2005 in Finland. So loads of experience, 16 years in the game. He's so well loved in Ukraine. He's received the Order for Merit on three occasions due to his performances at the 2008, 2012 and 2016 Paralympic Games. And he also holds the title of Master of Sport in the country. Unsurprisingly, as you may have seen with many people, his sporting hero is someone called Ronaldo, Cristiano. You may have heard of him. Back to the club throw, F32. Carmen with her third attempt, 4.29, her best. So in case you're just joining, I mentioned a moment, a moment or two ago, it is a category where all six throws come at the same time because the athlete has to be strapped into that seat, put into position. And they can, after the third, if they wish to reposition themselves. Can be an event that takes a, a little while, the club throw. Only five going in this one, though. Anastasia Moskalenko, the reigning champion who took gold in Berlin in the club throw and in the shot put. On the shot put in 2019 for Moskalenko as well. 6.18 for that one for Kalman. So her best to date. So it's a very good morning to Will Downing. Morning, everyone. It's been a, a good solid start for Kalman in this women's club throw and men's long jump T36 roll on the men's shot put F53. We've got lots of heat action this morning on the track. Women's 400 meters T13 is underway in about five or six minutes. Men's 400 meters in T12 and T13 as well. But we do have some track finals in around 90 minutes time. That's uh, another lovely morning in Midgosh, which definitely makes up for day one. Kalman with the thing of taking a little halfway break. So Pavlik, we've had to wait a long time for in this. The perennial favorite in this men's long jump, his teammate Litvinenko leading with 5.51.
Well, Pavlik has had a major weight on the runway, but it's not going to distract him from the task in hand because he's set his way up towards the medals already. European champion in 2014, silver last time out in Berlin, fourth in the world in Dubai, but he had won gold in this in London. Both in 2012 and 2017, he loves the stadium. Well, we count of every championship there. Pavlik going out to 5 metres 40 and that puts him into the silver medal position straight away. So it's Ukraine 1 and 2 early on in the competition. Yevpinenko now knows he has a challenge from his teammate but then he probably knew that was going to be the case anyway. Only Pavlik has gone further than him this season. It's Evgeny Tursunov who holds all the records from the Europe in 2016. And he didn't really clip the board much at all there. So he gave a few centimetres away. He gets the white flag, but he's not happy with it. And justifiably so, really. I mean, most athletes know when they've pulled off a good one and... That's at least 30 centimetres given away. He kind of pulled out of the jump as well. All the elements were there for something very good. But he knew straight away. 5.24. And despite that, that was still a really good effort. So all the elements going right. It certainly would have been at least 5.60. Open up a better advantage over Pavlik. So Petropolis of Greece, 4.79 in the opening round. He's in a very good position in terms of picking up a medal overall here. Who's heavily on the board and he's put a lot physically into this. T36 is the second most. Veronica Satova has been a, a European champion. The category of least visual impediment of the three. So in six for Spain, six of the 100 meters final, Nuria Pascal, her first major championship. In five for Russia, the 1500 meters bronze medalist. Gold in the four by one in Grisetto five years ago, Zatova. And Zamatsova, the defending champion reigning world champion as well for Ukraine and in three Lucille Raze for France fourth in the 200 meters final and the 2018 Europeans in Berlin fifth in the 100 meters so it's the top three to go through to the final plus the next two fastest
Raze in three, and time it's over four, so it's over five, Pascal six. So underway in this heat of the women's 400 meters, T13. And it's only the athlete that finishes in last place in this that is away of not reaching the final later tonight. So Tova away very solidly. It's unusual to double up in something like the 400 and the 1500 meters, but she's giving it a good go. She has done it before at the last World Championships, but didn't medal in either one. She was fourth in the 15, didn't even reach the final of the 400, that being in Dubai. And just look at this lead. It's Amitsova, who's won the last two World Championships over 100 and 200, silver in the 400 in the last Euros. But she's going to win this, having missed out gold in the 100 metres. So 59.67 she goes through. Tatova in second place, Raze in third. And Pascal Volgado will have to wait once she crosses the line. I don't think anybody excelling themselves very much. She's uh, gone out to 56 in her career. Tatova 62.01. And Samatova, Satova and Raze all through very, very comfortably. Hundred meters is the event in which she's dominated the most once it goes to the full lap. She's still up in the medals, but world title in twenty seventeen in London. That's the only 400 crown that she's claimed. Silver in Berlin, bronze in Dubai, bronze in Rio for the Kharkiv sprinter. Shorter the ditter, stronger she is. But that's a nice, quick, minute long trot for and Zatova. Just looking for a better lane draw, overtaking Raze in the final 10. Leila and Samsova dethroned in the 100, but looking good in the 400. One eleven sixty one was uh, Pascal Volgado's time. Back As we to head back the long to jump. the T36, Petropolis of Greece with his third attempt. Oh! Lifetime best of 5.26. Increased on his second jump from his first by 20 centimetres. Good use of the board. Very good use of the board. Can't ask for any more than that. So 5.18, so he's pushing up towards that lifetime best. He's eight centimetres off it. Leila and Zawatova with the victory. 59.68 qualifying along with Zatova and Raze. Pascal Volgado. We'll have to sweat it out for a few more minutes. Nice day for That's watching some athletics. Maximum of 21 degrees expected today. Hello. Yes, you're on TV. Russia at the top of the medal table at the moment. So why wouldn't they be happy? As we head over to the field, the men's shop with F53 underway. It's Yaroslav Brols, who's up first. It's exceeding category, so all six at the same time. He's the first of those to go. 
So regardless of what he throws, assuming it's a legal throw, which he's done, he'll be in the lead. His second was 5.70. This one, not so good, 5.06. Three left. Himself. He's the first championship for the Vantage 39. His lifetime best is over six metres. Thirsty work. no doubt being Poland we actually would have had a very very good crowd for these European Championships had we reached the stage in Poland where fans were allowed back sporting events it's an excellent stadium you can see why it's been awarded so many top events down through the years including this one the second heat in the women's 400 metres T13. The field of five going this one. The Glacier Fornierdo, who's silver in the 1 and 200 metres in the 2019 Worlds. Amileska of Belarus, 17 year old, first major championship. And Lilianenko, who's a 23 year old student, she was sixth in 2019, was the Russia in Dubai. That's an Kata, you took gold in 2014 and 2016. The European Championships of France will go in lane four, and Valentina Petrio will go from lane to be the first transgender athlete to compete if she can get there at the Paralympics later this year. So Petrio in three. Kater in four, Ulyanenko in five, Amileska in six, and Iglesias Fornero of Spain will go in lane seven. Same as the heat before, first three will qualify automatically for the final. And the two fastest, whoever finishes last in this, will be hanging by their fingernails, hoping they can get through. Trio just asked to move her hands back slightly and get away with no problems at all. So nothing really from the very beginning there, but it looks like the Russian Ulyanenko, the 23-year-old, has moved up very fast indeed on the inside of Abby Aleska. But out in front is the Iglesias Fornero of Spain, who leads, but working her way through very well indeed is the 2014 and 2016 European champion on the left of screen there, Tanine Cater of France. She also won gold at the 2016 Paralympic Games and she's looked very smooth indeed. She's a two-time world champion, Paralympic champion and Cater is looking very strong. She holds the championship and the European record. This the championship record set in Grosseto back in 2016. She realises she's through, she's eased up Iglesias Mordero is going to come through and take the win in first place. Cato will finish in second and it will be Ul who's going to come home and finish in third. 58-66 the time there for the Spaniard Iglesias Fornero. Cato realised she can just pull herself up. First three go through, no point exerting too much energy. Keep it for the final. A new lifetime best for Ulyanenko, who takes the third automatic qualification place. It's been a good championship so far for that lady, Iglesias Fornero. She's been busy and she's won this heat 56.93 seconds, the short time.
So Kata went out and looked to have the makings of her to win if she so chooses to, but she had the wherewithal to realise that, hey, there's no point exerting myself too much. I'll keep myself for the final. She holds the European Championship record, but ease herself right back. And the Spaniard who took silver in the one and two at the 2019 Worlds. Now in the 400 metres. And she's got a good rhythm about her. Solid athlete, solid win. She's through to the final. So Iglesias Fordano is through as is Kato and Ulianenko. Petrio will go through as a lifetime best and a qualifier and also a fastest qualifier, Amelia Nesca of Belarus. And that is the field. So the two fastest going through from the second heat, Jordan Likes of the double European and Paralympic champion, Anthony Cater of France. As we bump to the men's long jump, T36. 5.47 in the opening round, the former European champion trying to get his old crown back from the reigning champion and his teammate, Alexander Litvinenko. Well, he was winning major Paralympic titles going back to 2008 and he wasn't concentrating on the long jump back then. No worries about the board at all. And Beijing in 08 won the 100 and the 400. Wasn't until London 2012 had come along that he'd uh, discovered a talent in it. It was the first major championship he competed in the long jump and he won it. Subsequently, he's been world champion twice, European champion once. 566, lifetime best, and he goes into the gold medal position. Fantastically done. It was 563 going into this, and now suddenly he propels himself into top spot. They're approaching the midway point of that competition. Uh, the women's club throw, Christina Kalman with the early advantage for Hungary, but we're going to see Alia Issa very shortly. Petropolis in good spot in third place as we go immediately into round four in this long jump T36. Litvinenko knocked down into silver. The man who won in Berlin. Ukraine looking good for gold and silver, but in what order? Vinenko, not for the first time, not catching the board at all. So the run-up's got to be worked on. It's always a bit frustrating if you're in this and you give some centimeters away because obviously the second round attempt he had, well, that could have gone out to about 560. Ah! Being about 20 centimeters longer as well. Five meters, 67, and Litvinenko is back in the lead with a lifetime best. And that could have been much longer. Had he hit the board plumb on, he was deep in the 580s. So how does Pavlik respond now that he's been knocked back into second? This is a great jazz between these two teammates. The nine-time global champion. In the long jump and on the track, four Paralympic goals, five world titles. Is there another European coming? Ah, 
it's solid. It's not quite what he's seeking, possibly. But they've both gone further than they have done before in their career, and they were both solid five metre men. And anyway, Lipinenko got 5.55, Pavlik 5.63, and they're now deep. 5.67, 5.66. And another 5.66 for Pavlik. Equals his lifetime best. It's a calm day. The wind readings are negligible. Unlike yesterday when the weather had been good, but the wind had just perked up. So we had seen a few championship records and lifetime best which didn't count as Petia of Romania goes in this fifth round it is the second most strongly impaired of the standing coordination impairment categories so Petria has worked really well to go out to 439 that a lifetime best Petropolis is the only one who hasn't gone furthest in his career yet today, but he's still got a couple of attempts to do that. Didn't catch the board very much at all. But that is one of the challenges of this category. Three seventy-five. Petropolis's lifetime best is 5.25. And because it's Petria's lifetime best, the top three really are locked in now, but what order? Petropolis, a no jump in, round four, 5.18, equaling his season's best. Can he get out to a lifetime best here? I think he's gone a bit too far. In terms of the plasticine, that was a terrific jump. Unfortunately, I don't think it's a fair one. Because that was well beyond five meters. Being a 5.25 man, it's asking a huge amount of him to go out into the five sixes. Oh, you know what? I think he might be okay. Or maybe not. Well, if he's taken off, Without making an invitation there, he has done brilliantly. Light feet. Oh, look at that. Lifetime best, 5 metres 30. And all four in this final have jumped further than previously in their lifetimes. That's what you want. Let's move from the long jump, shall we? And head across to the shop, put F53. Yaroslav Broz of the Czech Republic was the first to get it. This man will be second, Mariam Presikan of Croatia. Gets himself set. Always one of the, the big things out the seat of the fence. It takes a little bit of time for them to get seated, get sorted, strapped into their positions. And Presican is just about ready to go. Lifetime best set this year, 7.70 metres. And that one there is pushing out there. White flag, no issues there. We saw loads of issues yesterday with athletes who were lifting their backsides off the seat and being called out for a foul. No such issues then. 7.41, so that takes Prestigan into the lead with his first throw. The 43-year-old electrician who likes a bit of table tennis, don't we all? He placed third with the bronze medal in 2016 at the European Championships. 6.29 through that day. He's absolutely smashed that already. Well over a metre above it. That one, similar mark as well. 
and 41 for his first. No mark when he competed at the ships in Dubai two years ago. I mentioned he liked table tennis. He ended up taking up athletics because he found it more difficult to hold the table tennis bat or paddle, I should say. So Prescott with his third, 744 with his second, so he improved by three centimeters. It was very similar as that one was. So three down, he'll have a chance to have a drink if he wants to reposition himself. Been competing since 2012 when he first got involved in Zagreb. Named the best athlete in Slatina in Croatia where he's from in 2015. Big throwers to come as well. Kesey of the Czech Republic, who's got a lifetime best of 8.25. Shea John Fernandez of Greece, who was the flag bearer back in 2008 in Beijing. 8.44, his lifetime best. Only a season best for him was 7.05 though. 7.55, present can, so he's pushing out there each time he throws at the moment. Fifteen centimeters off his lifetime best. Just approaching twenty minutes to eleven local time. As the fourth throw, well, you could put a matchstick around all four throws so far. They've been that close to each other. He's got a wonderful technique. Very powerful. Wasn't happy with that though. 7.45, so. Brawls, threw a season best in second. Present counter present is in the top position. A few clouds scattered around the stadium. No such issues as what we had in the opening day though. It looks wonderful. Great conditions for athletics of any kind, whether it be on the track or in the field. We keep on harping on about it. It's a shame there are no spectators here to actually witness these guys in action. So Presicam with his fifth effort in the men's shot put F53 seated category. This category for the limb deficiency or, or leg length difference or even impaired muscle power. So if you want to learn more about the categories in para sport, head to paralympic.org and you'll find out all you need to know. 721 for his fifth throw, so the last is going to have to have something on it if he wants to get above 7.55. He's put everything into that one. Absolutely everything as he unstraps himself. 
You can't fault his consistency. But I think that might be just short of his 7.55 in through with his third effort. It is 7.45, so very, very consistent from Marion Presicat. He stays in first position. Well, the lights are on. Maybe it takes a while for them to warm up for the evening session. Yeah, it's an interesting one, that. Well, I can tell you one thing about those type of lights. If you do turn them off, it takes a while for them to come back on because you have to let them cool down. So let's hope that they turn them off just before the evening session. Although it's summer, isn't it? And these guys are having So here ball. goes Petropolis, 5 metres 30, that brilliant lifetime best in round three. As he continues to go beyond his previous limits. He's in a great position for bronze, and it will be bronze from now. He's gone further than he has in his career. The others are 35 centimetres further up. And he didn't really use the board there. That'll be a little bit frustrating, but it's coordination impairment. Gets the white flag. I don't think he used the board at all there, really. So there might have been uh, an even longer lifetime best for him. But, oh, look, he's given about 30 centimetres away there. He did really well with that lifetime best. Um, the plasticine is still going up at an angle away from your approach. Was saying at the IAAF circuit, the uh, the plasticine is going to be straight up in future. That's the plan anyway. So that would mean more fouls, which uh, won't be crowd pleasing or uh, make TV viewers happy, which they're they're trying to do in the other circuit a lot. Men's 400 meters T12 medium visual impairment. First round heat. Three going in this. Gliatin, Akpulut and Sauchuk. Well, Igor Sauchuk, the 17-year-old last night, Bronze of the long jump in his first major championship event. That was absolutely awesome. In lane five for Turkey, August Akbulut, the reigning European champion. And on the inside, silver in the 1500 meters in the world championships in Dubai, Anton Kuliati. Only the winner of each heat and the next two fastest will go through. At Bullets, three major championship medals have all come in the 400. He's never competed in a Paralympic Games before, didn't make it to Rio. Bronze in the last two world championships, gold in the Euros. So, Kuliatin in three, Akbulut in five, Sajuk in seven, Akbulut with the championship record from when he won gold in Berlin three years ago. But, Sajuk is a real wild card when it comes to the track, as he was in the long jump last night. Akpulut has started really strongly and Sauchuk too. Akpulut 48.99 is lifetime best which is only a third of a second outside the long standing European record which goes back to 2002 in Lille from Gabriel Porter when the worlds were held there in the old Stad Metropole. Akpulut in good control here, Kuliatin coming back at him. Sauchuk's fallen back a little bit. And it's only the winner automatically going through. 50 points exact, Bullet takes it. Kuliatin second and Sauchuk in third. It's outside Akbulat's season's best. But he didn't need to do much more than what he did. And he is definitely in tonight's final.
even better, they're getting a rest. It'll be tomorrow. But whenever it is, Akpolut is ready. Sancho could start it really well. It's interesting, it, it looks more like he's wearing a football jersey there than anything else. Akpolut really strong and secure. And it's a warm old day as well. Akpolut clear. Kuliatin not able to come back at him and Akpolut takes the honours. Fifty seventy seven the official time. He's gone out to fifty fifty one this year. And Akbulut into the final. Lifetime best for Chavchuk as well. Fifty two point nine eight. Kalitin's time also strong. We well, go to the women's one. javelin F13, Pietranka. Pietranka's second throw. Did I say second? I'm in first. I can't count. See Pia Trenka with that first one. It looked reasonably good. Oh, it's reasonably good, all right. It's 30.54. It's a championship record for Pia Trenka of Belarus. So Litvinenko in the long jump, top of the standings. Pavlik has done his best to regain the title that he won in Swansea in 2014 in the Euros seven years ago. He's just gone out to 5.57. Litvinenko retains his European crown that he first won in Berlin in 2018 and it didn't really matter in the end where he went with that final attempt as he knew the victory was his Lifetime best for him, lifetime best for everybody. Bronze in the last World Championships in Dubai. And his second European title, 5 meters 67. It's a Pavlix 566. As we head back to the javelin throw F13, we just saw Pierre Trink with a championship record. Ishmael with her third. 1977, she's in fifth position. Here's Fatima Ishmael of Bulgaria. We saw the championship record of Laura Ruz Martinez go a short time ago. 20.46 for Ishmael. She stays in fifth position. So Ide, the Austrian, gets herself ready to throw, currently in second position. Ten years on the circuit. The 
European champion in the F13 category. This is a, a mixture of and she's 12s and 13s. So Pia Trenka, who you see in the background there, the 19-year-old, she's taken the record of Laura Ruth Martinez in the F13 category. Natalia Ida of Austria in the F12. Kulish Sorokina of Russia is the other of the F12 athletes taking part in this, the medium visual impairment. F13, the least of the visual impairments. She's got form in the European Championships. Let's see how the former championship record holder gets on. So Martinez Rico and the women's shot put F46. Bouton's already gone out to 9.49. This will be a very quick competition as there's just a two in it. But Martinez delighted with what she's done there and probably with very good reason. Straight to Bouton. Who's been an eight in her career? Already a lifetime best for her in 49. And those the best two throws of the competition so far, both coming in this third round. Martinez with the 950, followed immediately by Bouton with that PB of 949. Round four about to commence. And as both throwers come from different countries, different federations, they are going for a gold medal. Litvinenko gets the long jump T36 gold for Ukraine. Ahead of his Ukrainian teammate Pavlik and Anastasios Petropoulos of Athens gets the bronze for Greece as he did three years ago. The second in the men's 400 meters T12. Three go in this one. Including the man who took silver at championships in lane five, Luis Goncalves. But on the outside, here's a man who's running in the 400 meters for the first time in a major championship. He's always been solid over the 200 meters, winning goals, and over the 100 meters as well. Miguel to Mikalski, Lewis Konkalvas, there he is, the man who took silver back in 2008 at the Paralympic Games in Beijing. Silver at the last Europeans and Jose Luis Fernandez Taylor, silver in 2016 in Grosseto and fourth in Berlin back in 2018. So, medal winners are plenty. Three to go. The first will automatically qualify and from the previous heat and this one will then find the two fastest qualifiers to advance through to the final. <laughs> so Fernandez Teller in three, Konkalvas in five, and it is Matus Mikowski of Poland who goes in lane seven. And mikowski has got away very well indeed. Very fast first 100 metres by Fernandez Taylor as well, who's got a lifetime best of 50.14. And Mikowski has already pulled out after the first 50 metres. So we'll find out exactly what's happened there. He may have pulled a hamstring or pulled up. But as it is now, it means it's a race in two. So the first will automatically go through. Lewis Goncalves, who took silver in Berlin. Is struggling there to keep up with Fernandez Talder of Spain, who has a slower personal best time than the Portuguese, but it is at the moment going to be Fernandez Talder who's holding his form. He's got around 15 to 20 minutes to go, minutes to go. He gets across the line and it is the Spaniard Fernandez Talder who gets it in 50.40 seconds. Luis Goncalves will more than likely go through as a fastest qualifier, but 50.41 is the official time there for. Fernandez Taller, but Matus Mikalski, there he is. Well, I said it's his first time in a 400 in a major championship. He seems to be walking okay. 
perhaps he realised it wasn't for him. He's just running along there and all of a sudden he just pulls up. He does reach at the top. That might be a groin injury. And they fall. The race went on. And Jose Luis Fernandez Teller took over the lead around the last 200 metres and Lewis Goncalves had to just watch on from behind. A good 15 or so metres in it in the end. And the man who took silver in the European Championships in 2016, he was four at the last ones, is into the final. Oh. And we'll have a crack You're at a first goal. Yeah, I'm <laughs> We're fine as well, thanks, Lewis. Fernandez Talia. And Concalves. As they walk away, Mikowski will have to do the long walk around the far side of what looked like it might be an adductor or groin injury. So Concalves does go through as a fastest qualifier. Fernandez Talia with the victory in 50.41 seconds for him. And Mikowski didn't finish. There's our final, Fernandez Teller, Akbalut, who won their respective heats, Kuliatin and Luis Goncalves, looking to increase his medal ta tally from a major championships. So it's Natalia Edda, the reigning European champion in the women's javelin F13. Least visual impairment of the three categories. <laughs> 35.03 in the opening round had put her in good stead, but back into the silver medal mark now. As we always say, it is the least level of visual impairment, but in everyday life, it's a strong element of visual impairment. So the previous champion from 2016 leads the champion from 2018, Kulinic Sorokina of Russia. The past master in this, out in front, and this her fourth round throw. Thirty-seven ninety-five 95 in the opening round, Edda for one throw. Kulinic, who took this in Grosseto in 2016, the world champion in Lyon in 2013. Based in Ufa, which is one of the great centers of para sport in Russia. And she's got behind that well. It's a great technique to be able to hurl yourself forward and still get that foot stopped solidly right in front of the line. Thirty-six meters ninety. Her lead of almost three meters over Edder is maintained, but how well Pietrenka's done for Belarus so far. And it's like the three medalists are locked in. The order, not yet. Pietrenka's a thirty-six meter throw in her career. Here's Bulgaria. Coming into it as just about a 25 meter throw of Fatma Ismail. Her first major championship at the age of 24. Ilya Lalov is her coach. Twenty ninety two in round four, her best of the day. And that a massive improvement. It's a lifetime best. Twenty-five meters fifteen. And she goes up into fourth place. So Rus Martinez of Spain. And hit back immediately. Twenty seven oh seven a lifetime best set this year. No, no, Mark, Mark, Mark. A solid effort. Mark.
I won't see the repetition, please. The silver medalist from last time out is having a major fight to get two, back into the top three Boom. today. She's had three yeah, yeah, yeah. no throws. Yeah. What first, pressure then? It's a more long throw and no. Means that she ends up having to be precise instead of something a, a little bit wilder that could yeah, yeah, yeah. get her yeah, yeah. up the rankings and that won't 2167 yeah, Petrenka with that excellent championship record beating the old mark of Martinez by nine meters 33 49 in that third round And because there are no crowds, and because we have a lot of effects mics around, you can hear a lot more what's happening in the infield this time. Fifth in the World Championships in Dubai in November 2019 from Milan Igor Fartinov, so coach, who was the non-jump European champion. And it coached uh, Iga Sauchuk to that long jump bronze medal last night. I think she's loving her time. Well, you see, I saw the arms go up and I thought it was celebration and then the arms continued and it's, it's not quite that. 33-49 has her in the bronze medal position. Oh, 37-33. Look at that, a European record and she goes into the silver medal position. She could still win this. As we go to the men's 400 meters T13, same as the women's javelin, the category of least visual impairment. Four going in this, including two European bronze medalists. So lane six for Norway, eighth in the 100 meters final here in Bingosh, Vegard Dragsund. It's based in Post University in Waterbury, Connecticut. Oslo boy originally. European bronze medalist in the 400 meters. Last time out in Berlin, Alexander Schirin. Same as Hakan Sira. Silver in the one. And his first major championship. And this is his first major championship race in lane three for France, Paul Barba. So it's the first three to qualify for the final, plus the next two fastest. Akan Sira and Alexander Sheeran, who have both medaled at Europeans. Sheeran with a bronze at the Worlds as well in Dubai. Oh, dear. Oh, and Dragson's gone too early. Oh, well, I don't think he's going to be forgiven for that. A bit earlier, he'd have been fine. Or he could have put his hand up. But I don't think he's going to get away with that, I'm afraid. No way for Norway. Uh, that is a big pity. He's based in the States a lot. So to uh, come back across to Europe to pick up a red card would be very unfortunate. We've seen him in the eight. I don't think they're going to forgive him. It's not a charity. It is competitive sport. It is going to be a red card for Vegard Dragsund. Oh, dear. I think he knew that was coming. Well, that really is a big shame. 
And he had a really good chance in this, considering that there were openings for everybody in this heat to go through. Uh, that will not now be happening. And actually, I'll tell you, because of the quirks of it all, he's been eliminated. All three of these are now qualifying, and everybody in here will qualify as well through the mathematics of it all. <clears throat> so Barban in three, Sira in four, Shirin in five. They all have to run anyway to get placement times to the final for the lane draw. Barban is out well. Shirin even more so in lane four. Hakan Sira in the center lane. Also going well too. I wonder if they've worked out in their heads that they don't need to go too strongly for this. Because no matter what the lane draw, you can win from lane one, you can win from lane eight. Shirin and Sira, the two who are out in front. But of course, if you're an athlete and you're a serious athlete, you're in a race, you want to win it. Sira wants to win it and Shirin does as well. Hakan Shira will get the victory. Shirin in second place and 51.15 is the winning time. Well, maybe they went at about 80 or 90% tilt in that, but there was still a good race at the end of it. And Hakan Shira has got the victory. Bronze in the 400 meters in the last two Europeans, Grisetto 2016, Berlin 2018. But Barbant is through as well. His first major championship will have a final from AS Kalyur 8 Kire. Sharon wasn't going to expend himself too much if he knew he wasn't going to win. He knew he was going into the final, so. Akan Sira has got the win here. And Shirin wasn't going to do himself any damage to try and overtake him. But the good news for all three is that they're all through. So Hakan Sira qualifies for the final fastest, 51.12 Dragsund disqualified as Ruth Martinez tries to get herself up from fifth spot in this women's javelin F13. But it looks like she's destined for fifth spot and it really has shaken up in this past round. The two European champions taking the far, but Ruth Martinez who finished second in Berlin, finds herself down in fifth. Pietrenka is now in the silver medal position with that European record, and she's so close to top spot. Lifetime best, 36-11. How much more can she do? Wow. Wow. Well, she knows she's pulled off something major here. 36-11, a lifetime best going into this. She's added a meter and a quarter to it. 37-33, she's on. It's 37-95. That is Kalinic Sorokina's mark. Has she made it? No, so close. 38-97, and Pietrenka at best will be in the silver medal position. It will be her first major championship medal. Natalia Eder has won bronze in the last two Paralympic Games, a silver and a bronze in Lyon and London respectively in the World Championships. She's the reigning European champion. This throw has to be beyond 37.95 or it will be bronze for her. Is that enough? I suspect maybe not. Her reaction suggests that too. 
Well, she has been a 40 meter thrower in her career. 34.60 she'd gone out to before today. The last three championships, she's always finished in the top two. Last three Europeans. Can she? Oh, 37.06. So close to silver, but it's bronze for Ada for Austria. Piotrenka gets the silver for Belarus and Kulinic Sorokina just like 2014 in Swansea and 2016 in Grosseto is a European champion 37.95 her winning mark for now Kulinic Sorokina is an F12 guesting in this F30 13 that's why Piotrenka's mark is a European record and Krilinich's isn't. Her own European record is 42.66. That might have just gone outside the quadrant. It doesn't matter. She's the European champion again. Uh, just landed outside a red flag but she takes the honors well for coming with Sorokina and Edda their best throws came in the opening round but Piotrenko came between them with that new European record in round five it is a championship record also for F13 <laughs> well, Kulinic Sorokina is multi talented. She's been the 100 meters champion previously. Kulinic Sorokina, European javelin champion for the second time for Russia. Lisaveta Piotrenka with that new European record and championship record in the silver medal position. And Natalia Eder for Austria is third. 37.95, the winning distance. Back to the shot put. The women's F36. Now just about these two, Martinez. Martinez Rico, it is her first major championship and Bouton has uh, finished fourth pretty in these Europeans. Martinez, the champion. Bert Horn trying to qualify for her first Paralympics. She's been a para hockey international for nine years. Fancy to change. She's got to change. Martinez Rico with an ace European title. Only by a centimeter. Bert Horn with a lifetime best, 949. And that might be enough to qualify her for Tokyo. So the second heat in the men's 400 meters T13. The DQ in the last. And three who cruise their way through to the final. There are five who are going in this one. World champions, Paralympic champions, and European champions to boot. And as per the three fastest, we'll go through. And because of the system as well, all five will go through in this one because only three went through in the one before so it will mean that fourth and fifth in this will qualify as well Yabrilov going from seven the bronze at 2014 Jakob Nitzpon who's the reigning European champion goes from six Igor Sheriff of Russia who was the 2013 world champion and 2014 and 16 European champion goes in five Krapikas who's his first major championship will go from Lithuania in lane four and the 
Paralympic gold medalist from London 2012, silver medalist in 2016 in this event of the Europeans, Alexei Labzin of Russia goes from lane three. So there should be no need for anyone to go early from the blocks because they're all guaranteed a place in the final. Yabilov from seven, Nispon from six, Sharov in five, Krapikas in four, and Labs in in lane three and all getting away nicely with no issues whatsoever all evenly spread out Lavdin's already made a move up on the inside there of Kropikas from lane three he's worked his way up onto his shoulder the rest all looking pretty strong also in the middle the second of the Russians Igor Sharov who is the 2013 world champion is now rounding Nitzpon on the inside who's the reigning European champion all about late placements when it comes to that final. All five will go through and working his way through very well as the Azerbaijan athlete Yabrilov who's on the outside in lane seven. He currently leads from Sharov who's just cruising through on the inside. This spot as well, the reigning European champion of Poland in third position. Lithuania's Krapikas will go through. I think Krapikas has just pinched up a third on the line. It won't matter too much. This spot might not get the lane he's after though. And also coming through on the inside, Alexei Labzin just saving himself. But Yabrilov in the time of 52.43 seconds. This point has been given that third position. It must have been close. But they'll all go through. They all worked that one out. 52.43, the official time for Elmer Yabrilov. He was bronze in 2014 in Swansea. Fourth in Doha in the World Championships in 2015. Well, Sharov in the middle looked very, very relaxed indeed. Yabrilov worked hard, especially around that two to 300 meter mark. And Sharov looks like he's just jogging along there, doesn't he? Nitzpon's had a little look over to his left and Krapikas has made a play for it on the line. And Nispon was given that third placing and Alexi Labsin looked like he was out for a Sunday stroll in lane three, the Paralympic champion from 2012. So all through, Krapikas with a lifetime best. Yabrilov, Sharov and Nispon in those top three positions. Krapikas and Alexei Labzin. Don't discount him for the final, the man who won that gold in 2012, because he has certainly got more up his sleeves. So there it is, Shira Shirin from the opening one as well as Barbunt. They join the five from the second heat go through to the final in the men's 400 meters T13. <laughs> Back to the men's job put F53. It's Kesey. That is fifth row, 741 in second position at the moment. Presser Can, who we saw a little earlier, the Croat is in first position. But not any longer. 758 with that one puts Alice Kesey into pole position in the F53 shot put. Well, 
the hot action continues in a warm day in Bidgosh. This regular major athletics championship venue. Poland have held the last two European team championships. Chorsov had it last weekend. Bidgosh had the previous one two years ago. So a new competition for you now, it's the men's high jump T47 and 7 go in this, Turkey, Russia, Spain, Belgium, Ireland and France involved in the first of this week's high jump finals. It's always quite spectacular. As is this on occasion. Uh, this is no longer the high jump, but you probably worked that out for yourself. We've rejoined the F53 shot put. That there is Poland. He's preparing himself. We saw Kizzy of the Czech Republic on his penultimate throw. 758 took him three centimetres is past pressing out of Croatia and into the lead. Gorjak will be the fifth of the seven in action. Lifetime best set this year of seven point one seven. Takes a while, doesn't it? We'll get back to you on that. More shots of a wonderful stadium. What you saw there is the 200 metres. We'll be heading to that shortly for the T40. At the moment, we're in the women's club to our F32 and Moskalenko of the Ukraine. In first position, 1861 with that first. All six at the same time. And that looked pretty good as well. Twenty twenty four, so she's improved in first position. Two and a half meters clear of Miskova. And she takes the win. That club throw we saw then one of the First events to get underway on the morning session on the third day. Moskalenko retained her title. Gorjak, we're back here. More tape than a cardboard box, I'm wrapping up. I might be more concerned about how long it might take to unwrap him at the end of it. Well, he's certainly not going to come clear from that, is he? It's going to take hours. <laughs> More tape being used there than I use at Christmas time. I know who I'm asking to wrap my presents at Christmas from now on. <laughs> Mind you, you won't get them open until New Year's Eve. Well, there's confirmation of Moskalenko and the women's club. Sorry, F. 32, 20.24, lifetime best for Wusikova and Robaha in second and third place, respectively.
Well, he's just about ready. Here's Korshak. Let's just trust that doesn't come undone or he gets given a red flag after all that work. So his first is a very decent throw indeed. He's been given a white flag after all that effort. Well, Korshak looks certainly pumped up and ready to go. That one there has put him in second position, a lifetime best with his opener of 757. Well, there's that world record mark you can see out there of 83. That was set a few years back. Right, Brazil's Andre Rocha. 7.37, so a slight backwards movement as far as the scores are concerned there for Gorjak. 7.17, his lifetime best coming into it. 40 centimetres passed out on his opener. Season best is 7.13. But that one is long as well. There's certainly consistency. He's given himself now, he gets a chance to, if he needs to reposition himself or tape himself some more. I like what he's done there with his glove. He's made sure that he can just whip it off there. No doubt the tape will be applied before he continues on. But, well, 777, he's improved that lifetime best. He's set with his first by another 20 centimeters. him up into first position he's heading for a gold medal at home so the final of the women's 200 meters t47 Poland with two shots of home medals here So starting off with lane eight for Poland, first major championship, fourth in the 400 meters final here for Agata Chivinska. In lane seven for the Czech Republic, silver in the 100 meters in the last Europeans in Berlin, Teresa Yaskova. In lane six for Poland, gold in the last three European championships for Alicia Yeremin, silver in the one and the two in Rio. In lane five, for France, the defending champion in this, Angelina Lanza. In lane four for Russia, bronze in the Universal Relay, fourth in the four winners in the World Championships in Dubai two years ago, Anastasia Stolaveva. In lane three for Serbia, first major championship for Saska Sokolov. In lane two for Norway, first major championship final for Ida Louise Povela. And in lane one for Poland, a first major championship for Agata Gala. So Poland with three in this final. Galan in one, Oberland in two, Sokolov in three, Solaveva in four, Lanz in five, Jerem in six, Yaskova in seven, and Chivchinska in eight. The final of the women's 200 meters, T47.
They're finally away, they're off to a long time, but they're through in this 200 metres final. And what an excellent start by Alicia Yeraman in lane six for Poland. Just go alongside, going very strongly too. Lanz is falling back to the defending champion. Trying to fight back into it as well. So the Evan and Sokolov are moving up well, but it's Alicia Yeraman for Poland. Here comes Sokolov now for Serbia. What a battle. Sokolov trying to edge out in front. Oh, that's a photo finish. 25-55 Sokolov for Serbia. Yeraman for Poland. It just depends on the tip. Sokolov was coming good on the far side, and I think she's got it. 25-56 for Saska Sokolov. Her first major championship, her first major title. Yeraman broke the championship record in second. Soloveva coming up between the two. But Sokolov, who's a T46, guesting in this, is the European champion. An amazing moment for the 26-year-old from Bersk. Poland get themselves a silver through Yeramin, who won the silver behind Lanza in the last Europeans in Berlin. Yeramin was fighting all the time, she was leading all the time until the final meter. Just look at Sokolov, she knew she had a big chance for glory. A big grimace on her face turning into a smile and she got the dip right. It goes on the torso and Sokolov clearly there first. Yeraman try, just missed out. She's not number one, she's number two, but that'll do this time. She won this in 2016 along with the 100 meters, but she gets silver in the 200 this time. And it is gold for Saska Sokolov. That's a name to remember. She's the champion for the first time. Yeraman, the silver for Poland. Soloveva, the bronze for Russia. And Lanza came back well for fourth. So the main events continue. Here's somebody very familiar. Sara Fernandez Roldan going in this women's long jump T12. The medium visual impairment category, Anna Kanyuk of Belarus, regularly on the podium herself. Sara Martinez of Spain. They've got three in this final because after Oksana Subkovska, we see Anna Moya. 17 years old, her major championship debut. Spain always seemed very well represented in the long jump as we switch to the high. And Aki. Perfect set of marks so far. Claire at 170, which is what we moved on to. They're not wasting any time. Well, they're still all in it at the moment. Most have passed up the early marks. Moulin of uh, Belgium with an equal lifetime best, same as Aki. Now Perez Martinez having skipped the first three distances, going for 170. Oh, and he's well clear. And a lot to spare. Still to see Alexander Poco Wane, Abdullah Ilgaz, and Jordan Lee come into the competition as Matthew Muller goes now. But no joy. Having uh, equaled his lifetime best, that would have been for a brand new one at a new height.
is with Royal White Star Athletic Club in Wallaway, Saint Lambert. Long jumper as well, coached by Corentin Campanier in that, coaching the high jump by Pascal Van Damme. So Muller will have another go. He finished seventh in the high jump in the uh, Europeans. Oh, that's better. That's hanging on. Good job. Now he's got a good bit to spare there. And uh, just the legs tipping off. The rest of the body's fine. So that's something to iron out in the technique. <laughs> it's only in the past couple of years that uh, Mulat has come into Power Athletics. There was basically an accident at a train station on a footbridge four years ago. There was an electric shock. But uh, Matt Mulat clears based in App in Belgium. I've never been in App. You've downloaded a few. Mark Yef next to go for Russia as the bar goes to 175. No problem at all. <laughs> Akin, like Matthew Muller, has uh, equaled and now surpassed his lifetime best today. So 170, perfect marks across the way going now for 175. That's his first miss of the day and it was uh, a comprehensive one. He finished sixth, just one place above Moulin in the last European Championships. 11th in Dubai in the last Worlds. Perez Martinez now going for 175. Oh, no problem. Well, they're gliding over. It's, it's always great in the opening rounds. Confidence is high, but how high can the heights go? Most of them are coming in reasonably early. Nobody's actually cleared two meters in their career. We have seen two meters cleared in uh, a few of the men's high jump categories. So Matt Moulin, he just has jumped out of it. He's the town of Ath, A T H. It's. Uh, Near Roubaix, they, uh, the House of Giants is in the town of Ath. It sounds interesting. <laughs> oh, he just came down on that. It's considering how well he cleared 170. Obviously, Leverage with the arms is is not as complete. 
That's well, here's something else which circuit. isn't complete. The men's shot put F53. We saw Gorjak earlier with a new lifetime best of 7.77. This is Fernandez of Greece. He was actually born in Harare in Zimbabwe. Ended up moving to Greece in 1992 to study. Fernandez is, is being told that he has to make sure he uh, keeps that leg down there. So we saw we saw plenty who were given a red flag yesterday in the city shop put it's the reigning Paralympic champion that's part of the reason why also won gold in the European Championships back in 2016 so it was a good year for Shay John Fernandez Will 2021 be as kind to him as well? Well, 7.43 for his opener, a season best, lifts him up into fourth position. As we return to the track of the men's 100 metres, T52. Defending European champion goes in this one, Mario Trindade of Portugal. He will go from lane four, but inside him in lane three, Fabian Blum, who was fourth of those European championships three years ago. The man who is defending champion, lifetime best of 17.67. He holds that championship record from Berlin. And Ben Bosch. 49 years of age, already been in action in this, winning silver in the 400 metres here. Kestudis Skukas took bronze in that 400 metres as well, the PhD in social sciences man, former para swimmer. And Roger Habsch, who was fourth in 2019 in Dubai, took up the sport just a year before in 2018. And Thomas Gierspickler, he's already a gold medalist here, won the 400 metres. He's been racing since 2000. He does prefer the longer distances, does the bearded gear spickler. So we'll see how he gets on in this 100 metres. Men's 100, T52. Blum in three, Trindade in four, Bursch in five, Skukas in six, Haps in seven, and gear spickler looking to make it two goals of these championships. will go closest to the camera in lane eight. <coughs> so the reigning champion Mario Trindade has got away quick as has beat Bosch next to him but always quicker than the rest in the inside is Fabian Blum who's been caught though by Ben Bosch and Bosch who picked up a silver over 400 metres is heading for a gold over 100 metres as Bosch is going to take it in a time of 17.66 and a new championship record for Ben Bosch Mario Trinde, the reigning champion, had got away rather quickly. But Bosch, and on the inside, Fabian Bloom, also of Switzerland, got out very quick, and it was Bosch who was able to hold on. And Bloom has made it a Swiss 1-2, 18 26. For the Swiss, and B. Bosch, after ticking up silver in that 400 metres, he's now gone on to pick up a championship record and gold over 100 metres. 
took him about 20 meters or so to get into it around the 30 meter mark he then pushed on Gesh Bickler who I said is better over longer distances got away okay but just couldn't go the pace Trinday tried his best but it was just sandwiched in the middle by the two Swiss athletes and there is where Pierre Bosch pushes away from his compatriot Fabian Blum who takes second place and Trinday did his best to try and retain his title but it wasn't enough. A championship record for Bert Bosch. Trinday has been dethroned. He finished in third position, the Portuguese. And it is the Swiss with immaculate timekeeping in the final. Bosch and Blum celebrate. He couldn't have raced that one any better. Good be a Bosch. An absolute competitor. Been racing since 1998. When he started off in Birmingham in England for the Swiss and he's picked up a championship record and a gold in the 100 meters t52 european champion fabian bloom with a silver and the former champion dethroned mario trinday with a season best in third women's long jump t12 and zibrovska with her opener and that looks very good indeed She's the world European record holder. Oksana Zabrowska. Right in the middle of the board. Season best of just 402 she's got a lifetime best of 6.60 what was that world record she set in london back in 2012 and 553 so a season best and puts her into first place after her opening jump plenty of great action around that's the belgian team watching on because one of their main sponsors is the Belgian National Lottery Company. Also, sponsored that cycling team for a long time. Well, this high jump is heating up. It's uh, going to be Jordan Lee, who's the last into the competition for Ireland. He has just cleared his first mark at the second attempt whilst we've been away watching that final. So Ilkaz, the last into this competition, he skipped the first six heights. Now going for 183. We started at 155, he didn't go for that. The rest are in your picture. 183 for Ilkaz now. Who has not yet medaled in a major high jump competition. He's very confident coming in so late. And I always worry about athletes who do that. We've uh, seen in the pole vault Renault the Villainy do it. And quite famously, Saga Bubka did it once. He didn't usually lose that often. But if Ilkaz gets this right, and if he clears, he'll be immediately straight into the lead. We have lost Akin and Mular, who both missed out at 175. They cleared 170 for lifetime best, as we join Margiev going for 183, who finished fourth in the World Championships in Dubai 18 months ago. The man from, originally from Tbilisi in Georgia, but has lived uh, a lot of his adult life in Vladi Kavkaz. Well over, no problem. He is clear. 
He has a coaching degree from the Institute in Vladikavkaz. And he has a great degree of clearance as well there, a lot to spare. Perez, Martinez for Spain. Clearance is all the way, but not now. That's his first miss coming at 183. I know there's something good here, but I can I cannot tell. Well, you've heard it from him. This side, yeah. The man from Leon who has two European silver medals, and now for Ireland, Jordan Lee. So successful in the last European Championships when he got on the podium, but he's just knocked for the first time here with Kalani Valley AC, coached by Tomas Griffin, the former able-bodied basketballer. That's his first miss at 183, having cleared 179 at the second attempt, and at the moment he's down in fourth. To Poco Awan is going to go now for France. He was going to wait his turn earlier, but not now. Two clearances to date. This is first to 183. Yes. So good. The man who's won the last two European titles and frankly, he's looking good for it again here. So next up, the final of the women's 100 meters, T34. Four in this. This is the category where Anna Cockroft has dominated for so long and now in the last uh, Paralympic cycle, Carrie Denigan on the scene as well. So in lane three for the Netherlands, silver in the 2014 Europeans, whole load of silvers and bronzes in the Paralympics of the Worlds, Amy Simmons. In lane four for Great Britain, first major championship for Babi and Andre. In lane five for Russia, gold in the 100 and the 400 in the Europeans in Grisetto in 2016, Veronica Doranina. And in lane six for Belgium from the KAA Ghent Club, Cecile Gons, her first major championship for Belgium. 17 years old. So Simons in three, Andre in four, Doranina in five, Gons in six. The final of the women's 100 meters, T34. Set. And they're away. And Doranina, who won those two goals in Grisetto when a lot of the top British athletes weren't present. She started excellently. But here goes Andre for Great Britain, coming out in front. And she's going to be the European champion. What a result. Andre takes it. Doranina second. Simons in third, and Goins in fourth was well out of her lane. Lifetime best, 18.94. No Carcroft, no Adenigan, but still a British champion. Fabian Andre, and that was just Fab, the former Paris swimmer on the track, and a champion straight away, 24 years old out of the Weir Archer Academy, coached by Jenny Archer. What a terrific success. Lifetime best as well. Gonna have to find an extra seat of the plate for her for Tokyo. That was terrific. Doranina and Siemens, Doranina particularly had started excellently, but then Andre just got going halfway through. And on she went for a great win. Another great triumph for Britain in this T34.
European champion. She's a physio assistant on the NHS and the health service. Like everyone there, she's had a busy year and on the track too. Lifetime best. 18.94 she wins. And Doranina, silver for Russia and Simons the bronze for the Netherlands. Goins in fourth. Well, Fabian Andre, that was, that was fab. She goes as fabs at times. And this man is also fab at times. It's Ilgaz going for 187 in the high jump. Ilgaz currently in third position. Tintapoko Wanye looked very good though when he cruised across there. At the 183 mark. Well, he just clipped it with his backside as he went over. It looks like a, a gettable hurry, I guess. He just saw his backside clip it. So he stays where he is. He's going to have another couple of shots at that. Just to update you briefly, Jordan Lee cleared his second attempt at 183. That's while that T34 final was on. Well, Magiev, four still in it, and Magiev at 187. Well, that looked good, didn't it? Loads of space between him and the bar. One ninety-three is his lifetime best. He looks well capable of going past that. He had loads of space. Here is Jordan Lee. So Jordan Lee from Kerry. 187 for Ireland and a first time clearance to get into the medals that's the way to do it 187 it's a season's best for him he's a 195 jumper look at the facial effort just pivoted the body over got the legs clear and that's a first time clearance. He'd missed his first attempt on the previous two. As we go women's to Martinez for Spain in the women's long jump. 531 of best so far, lying in the silver medal position. T12, so they go with the big chalk area. Guides. Optional. Big track final coming up in a few minutes. The women's 100 meters T64. Three for the Netherlands in that. Spain rep well represented in that too with Andres Barrio. And that is a... That's a juicy final coming up. This is a good long jump competition, but it's a no jump. So Kovska still leading for Ukraine, that attempt in the previous round that we saw live, 5.53. So Astonov in the men's shot put F53. Eight twenty-three is best. That a lifetime best for him. He's guaranteed of the gold medal because he was the last to throw. Question is, how far can he throw it? He's got nothing to lose at all. 
He's currently three centimetres off the championship record set in Swansea seven years ago. Seven seventy three with that one, two left. Been competing for nine years. Throwing the javelin in Berlin. Shot put this time out. And what a way to do it. Fourth in the javelin four, three years ago. In the 54 category, he's about to become a European champion in the shot put. In the F53. Loves to travel. He'll be doing a little bit more. Well, the man from Baku with performances like this. She made the shot put travel as well. So that's his final throw. A lifetime best amongst it. Missed out on the championship record. 7.43 for his last, so his third is the winner for him. And he claims the gold medal, does the man from Azerbaijan at 41 years of age. Women's shot put F37 category, standing. That's Eva Detinska, who we've already seen in action at these championships. Nine seventy-four. So Detinska goes straight into the lead. The Czech woman. Back to the track, the women's 100 metres T64, as Will alluded to a few moments ago. This one. Marlene Van Ganswinkel, who holds 64 record, and Fleur Yong, who you can see there, who's the world and European record holder for T62. It's 12.73, her lifetime best. Sir Andres Barrio, who was fifth in 2018, the primary school teacher. And Marlene Van Ganswinkel, she was the 100 metres and 200 metres champion from 2018. Basia Rahmani, 200 metre goal for her in 2018 in her category, fourth in this race. And Kimberly Akameda, the third of the Dutch taking part. She took bronze at the World Championships in Dubai two years ago. And Sophie Kamlis, we've seen her in the past. She was a world champion in 2017 at home in London. So packed with class, this field. Yong goes from three, Andres Barrio from four, Van Ganswinkel in five, Rachmani in six, Archimedes in seven, and Kamlish will go from lane eight. Women's 100 metres T64 final, and they get away and getting away well as Kamlish on the outside and through the middle of Van Ganswinkel, who's now making a move. Andres Barrios looking good. Fleur Young is coming through on the inside. Van Ganswinkel, Fleur Young. Fleur Young is going to get it, and Van Ganswinkel second. Andres Barrio in third, and Fleur Young in the last 30 or so metres has really put the afterburners on. She picks up the gold medal. It's a Dutch 1-2. Van Ganswinkel picks up the silver. And Spain comes through in third place. A world record as well. 
12.64 seconds for Fleur Young. She's broken her own record by 0.14 of a second and a championship record for Van Gansewinkel. I'll just barrier her through. The sheer enjoyment, and look at that, she's realised she's just broken a world record. I think it was Van Gansewinkel who broke the news to her. Well, that's what it's about. She set her own world record last year in August in Leverkusen. And she's broken it. Yes, indeed. Championship record for Van Gansewinkel in the T64 class. Alcabeda's in there in the picture. She finished out of the medals, but what a performance for Fleur Young. She got off to that slowish start, which you expect. Cambridge was away quickest. And Young, the double amputee, came into her own in that last 30 metres. That is what happens with the double amputee. It takes a little while for them to get going, but well, she knew she won. But Fleur Young, it took her a while. And that's when she found out she'd broken the world record. Scenes of absolute joy. Well, they were the two big names coming into it. And they haven't disappointed. There'll be a happy Dutch coach in Ardo Moll. He'll be watching on. The 25 year old Fleur Young. She only took the sport up in 2015. Another world record. 12.64. It was at 12.78 before that. She smashed a championship record for Van Ganswinkel in second. And Andres Barrio with a season best to pick up the bronze. I mean, they've got some program there. That is a fantastic win. Previously, a world championship bronze. I don't think she's competed at the Europeans before, and she's European champion. Right now, and Kamlish was up there. Kamlish very strong, who'd, who'd been a world champion in London. And don't forget, I mean, Marlou van Rijn hasn't been in the Dutch team for the last couple of major championships, and she'd been pretty much the big star in this category for a decade. And that is a full Dutch team of three, and Jong, Van Ganser, Winkle, and Al Kamada are three terrific athletes, and Al Kamada meddling herself in those World Championships in Dubai. Ilgaz, 194, with a big assault on the medals, as he, like Fleur Jong, tries to get her first major title. Just knocked it. I mean, the technique that has to be adapted in a situation like this in the ambulance categories. So the balance has to be shifted a little bit. It's a, it's a skill in its own right. So Margiev clearances all the way. Jordan Lee, we have lost during that T64 final. Three misses at 191. Apologies, we didn't see the end of his competition. He finishes in fourth place for Ireland. Perez Martinez finishing in fifth for Spain, who was missed out on the last two Paralympic Games. But there's no missing here by Margiev. He looks in great form. He too has never medaled in a major championship. But he looks good. He looks really good. He's not had a miss yet. Even Dabako Awane, who's won the last two European high jump titles, did have a miss at 187. It's a hot one for gold. That a championship record, 194. And Dabako Awane now trying to level it. And he hasn't. It was his championship record for winning gold in Berlin. That's just gone. One ninety-four is his lifetime best. 
Ilgaz also with a miss at this mark. 190 his lifetime best. Ilgaz has gone a centimetre clear of it. One miss at 194. Second attempt coming. Well, the Irish support for Jordan Lee, as you saw there, not getting the result that they wanted today. But here's a woman who regularly does in the shot, and she's leading, Eva Detinsk. <laughs> And the has already picked up a gold medal in the discus on day one. So looking to do the double. Didn't like that one, did she? You're right. So still... 974 for a first. 972 doesn't improve, but she's well out in front. As we head back to Ilgaz, uh, the men's high jump T47. Yes, yeah, second attempt at 194 for Ilgaz of Turkey. Missed that too. He is bound for his first major championship medal, but the pressure's on. Only one attempt remaining. And he's already surpassed his lifetime best once today by a centimetre. This to add four onto his previous mark. And on that evidence, beyond him this time. Zubkovska so leading the women's long jump 12. 5.53, twice in a row. And she's gone well out there. That is a major jump. The world record holder from London 2012 going out to 6.60. She'd only hit four metres this season, but it's been a restricted season, obviously. So ignore that world record mark. As that relates to where the chalk starts. Five forty nine, not a best, but she is still the best, and actually five forty nine would still be good enough for top spot. And Moya Soriano in fifth spot, four fifty seven. In her first major championship, 491 her lifetime best set this year. She's t only turned 17 in March. And she does need a guide. Didn't quite get the stride pattern right. Plays the piano a lot. She's with the Poblats Maritimes team in Valencia. Just a matter of timing. Still a student. And you may have guessed from what we've said earlier, she's a music student. Professional Conservatory of Music of Valencia. That actually did register as a mark, but we won't dwell in it. As Ilgaz, who will medal for the first time in a major championship, Trying to clear 194 at the last attempts. This is it. Didn't get over and now it is over for him. But it is third place, it is bronze. And having finished fifth in Berlin, that is a major Accession. He's overtaken Jordan Lee, who'd finished two places above him in Berlin. 
as we go back to the track. It's the first heat of the men's 400 meters T54, the fastest racers. And two of the great names are in this, Leo Katati and Kenny Van Wiegel. So in lane eight on the outside for Spain, it's Jose Manuel Quintero in seven for Azerbaijan. Down the field in the 2019 Worlds, it is Karapetian for Armenia in six. For Austria, six in the 1500 here, Ludwig Malta. We've gone through to Kenny Van Riegel, the three times European champion for the Netherlands in five. Two Paralympic golds as well back in the noughties. In lane four for Great Britain, gold in the Universal Relay in Berlin, bronze in the one, the two, and the eight in 2018, Nathan McGuire. And in lane three, we've seen the Flying Dutchman. Here's the Flying Finn, the winning Finn, the nine time European champion, Leo Pekatati, champion of the 100 meters this week. Top three to go through. Through the next two fastest after that. Tati in three, Maguire four, Van Wiegel five, Malta six, Karapetch and Quintero. And they're away at the first time of asking. So it's the top three, Leo Pekatati and Kenny Van Wiegel with all those medals, all those titles. Ludwig has been a double world champion in the 800 and the 1500. He's got off well, Maguire's got off brilliantly. And so too Leo Pekatati, who is just about unbeatable over 100 meters. And Kenny Van Wiegel as well, who won silver in the one, the two, and the four in Berlin. Guess who won all the golds? Maguire's going up. Maguire winning bronze in the one, the two, and the eight in Berlin, along with that universal relay gold. And it's these three who are way clear, and these three who are qualifying. End of story. It's gonna be a little bit of pride in terms of who wins this. It's gonna be Kenny Van Wiegel. Maguire sits up and so does Tati, and they're the three to go through. Malta in fourth after the good start. Quintero Macias in fifth, and Karapetian will be sixth for Armenia. 48-48 for the man based in Eindhoven. Maguire is the season's best. There's been a lot of world records in that household in the past couple of weeks. All those... Grand Prix in Switzerland. So Van Riegel, just strong, wanted the win a little bit more. The other two, well, if they were out of contention by the final 30, then they'll just sit up and take the qualification. All through to the final, Malta will have to wait. He was a bit back. And Leo Pecatati pulled out of that very early, and Maguire said, well, if you're going to do that, I'll do the same. Thank you. All yours, Kenny Van Riegel. Okay. 48-48. A lot more to come. Well, it's a good trot for those three in the end. Kenny Van Riegel, Nathan Maguire, Leo Pecatati. We'll see you all in the final tomorrow. A Carapetian finishing at 115. Armenia sending a larger squad than usual here. And welcome to see. Depoko Wane in the high jump, in the silver medal position, and he will stay there. The champion from the last two European Championships finishes in silver. Time. It's gold for Margiev. There's been a changing of the guard. Two first-time medalists. Margiev hasn't missed yet. And he's bringing a European gold back home to Vladi Kafkaz with him. The 
Poco Iwane would have needed to have set a new lifetime best of 197. He didn't. And with those misses, he still would have been in second and can back behind Margiev. That was such a fine style. He got most of himself over comparatively easily there and ju then just dropped down top of the thighs. Sort of fell like a stone a bit. He has the gold. What more does he want? I'll tell you what, a European record. That would have matched it from Reinhold Bertzel in Lille in 2002. He's still got two more attempts. Roderick Townsend is the world record, 2.14. 2019 set in Torrance, California. A little bit of advice, seeking profession now that that has been lost in the competition. But hey, he's the champion. Garden Stott here for Iceland in the women's shot put F37. Her penultimate throw, she's in third position, 8.75 at best, that was in her last one. Tinska leads. Her lifetime best of 8.75. She's only one centimetre shy of her Icelandic compatriot, Alison Dotter. 8.60. Oh, she thought she'd done it. <laughs> oh, she started running. She'll have another go. This lady has two more. Tatinska looking for that double in the shot put, having already won the discus. She's one meter exactly ahead. She set the championship record of 11 meters and one centimeter seven years ago. Remarkable. That's another one meter and 25 centimeters on top of what we've seen here. So Kaproska, the youngster who sits in the fifth and final position. With her final throw. Twenty years of age. Kaproska. Here's someone who's slightly old. It's certainly a champion. Zubkovska well on the way in this women's long jump T12. Ready for more glory. Those two efforts of 5.53. And just a little bit of class, a part of the moment. Just to let you know too that Tatinska, whose numbers we didn't see come up before, 10.16, she's thrown in her last one. So she's extended her lead. 5.57 is a new championship record for Zubkovska. And ahead of the conclusion of that, there's history coming in the women's shot put. I'm pretty sure Iceland have never had two medalists in one para-athletics competition before. Adal Steins here, clearing at 76 in round two. There's her final attempt. And along with 
Ingeberg Gardas dot here. They're on their way to a significant result. Lifetime best for both of them. Adal Stein's dot here, 8.09. She won't improve, but what a day of history for them both. Bergronos, Al Stein's dot here in the silver medal position. And here's Ingeberg Gardner's dot here, who is a centimetre behind, currently in bronze, aiming for the silver medal. It's the fourth major medal in the career of Adal Stein's dot here. Gardner's daughter in the first major championship about to get her first in the shot put. That's a nice throw. That is a nice throw. What's she gone and done here? 876, the mark of Adalstein's daughter. This has to be 877 and it's not. 8.36, she misses out, it is bronze, it's a lifetime best, and it's a European medal and a major championship debut for Gardner's daughter, Iceland get silver and bronze, that's history, as Detinska gets another gold in her career. 10.16 she leads, and she was well clear of the rest. Well, Detinska has improved on what happened uh, three years ago. That time she only managed the silver with 10.79. She's thrown less here, but she's going to pick up the gold. First one, this is the European Championships back in 2014 when she took gold then. So seven years on, she has improved. 10.20, she claims the gold. So with the discus, she's done the double as Eva Datinska. Well, I should say, remarkably for Adal Stein's daughter, she's never competed in a throwing event in a championship before. And she's got the silver, the Tinska, unbeatable in top spot today, and she's European champion again. So, so Eva Tinska winning on 10 metres 20. Iceland historically gets silver and bronze. Two medals for the first time, Adal Stein's dot it and Gada's dot it with silver and bronze. One more race ahead of tonight's 400 metres T54 final. As we go to Kanyuk in the long jump, 487 at best in round five. <laughs> That championship record by Zubkovska is so impressive. And she has gone around a metre longer than that in her career to claim the world record. Well, Kanyuk is in a prime spot here in the final round. She's gone out to 487. She's in fourth place. Behind Sarah Fernandez, Roldan is a regular heavy medalist. And Kanya can celebrate. She goes into the top three. It's five meters 01. And that is the bronze medal for her. And nobody can overtake her now. Fernandez, Roldan has had her last attempt. The final track event of the morning session, the second heat of the men's 400 metres T54 class across this field, as we saw in the last one as well. The three fastest will go through. The next two fastest from both heats advances to this evening's final. In lane eight, there's Stannis Nazarayan of our media qualified in this event back in 2019 so he'll be hoping better. Esapeka Matila of Finland took bronze in the 100 metres of the opening day. The senior debut for this man came in 2017. Vanda Wazalat 
of Netherlands. His hero is Kenny Van Vigel. Surprise, surprise. Alexey Benchok of Russia, the former para cross country and para biathlon athlete. Bronze in 2016, over 400 metres at the European Championships. There's Beach Knock. There's the man there. Julian Castley is debut back in 2005. Believe it or not, he's medal Castley in all the long distance. There's never a gold at a major championship. That man, Daniel Sidbury, silver in the 1500 metres here already for great. So six on the start, three definitively through to the final. And the next two fastest from both the heats will go through to this evening's final. Away with no problems at all and starting out very quickly in lane seven, as you would expect, is Esapeka Matila of Finland. This is his first time in the major championship 400 metre race. He's already done well in the 1500 metres, as I alluded to a moment or two ago, and also doing well in the orange shirt there of the Netherlands is Van der Bottelat. His senior debut coming back in 2017 and rocketing around the middle is Julian Cassily. He's been around for what has appeared years as Cassily goes across all the major distances and he looks like he's going to easily work his way through in that top three. He's just out in front there on the inside of him, Daniel Sibri of Great Britain. It looks like he's going to pip it on the line. Is Sibri. It's Castley in the next position. And it is Bichnok of Russia who has gone through to take that third position and ultimately qualify automatically for the final. 48-82 is the time there for Daniel Sibri. Castley setting a season best 48-94. And Bichnok in 49-08 going three, qualifying for the final. So it appeared easy in the end for Sibri. Castley and Bichinok. They eased up somewhat coming towards the line. Matila started off well. Struggled somewhat in that last couple of hundred metres. It's his first time in a 400 at a major championships. And when they came around that final bend into the last hundred metres, Castley had a lead of five metres or so and he just eased up on the wheel somewhat as he heads down towards the finishing line. Knew his place was complete. Bitch not completes the trifecta, but that man there, Daniel Sibri, looking to go one better in the 400 than he did in the 1500. But it's going to be a packed field for the final. Leo Pecatardi, Kenny Van Vigel. Pecatardi, as always, is the man who you'd be looking at. He holds the championship record in this one. So 48.82 for Sibri. Castley with a season best 48.94. Bichnock goes through 49.08. And Van der Voort of Lack and Matil have also qualified as the two fastest going through from heat number two. So there is the field that's gone through. Van Vigel quickest of all. But that name, Leo Pecatardi in 49.12. But he's there as two British athletes. Going to the final as well. Sibri, the winner of this one, and Maguire, who went through earlier. Well, it's no joy at 197 on the triple from RGF, but he's the European champion anyway. His first so major honour. <sighs> Technique-wise, you know, he really wasn't that far off. He... He'd managed to brush most of himself over. It's not a case of really Thank brushing you, it off. It's just the, the small of the back just rolling it off. Well, the sport is ever-changing. So many new names always pop up in the World Championships immediately before Paralympic Games. New names popping up here in the European Championships before Tokyo 2020. Markiev gets the win. Championship record for Russia. 194, that was his third attempt at a European record. The Poco Wale, the outgoing champion in second, Ilgaz third for Turkey, and Jordan Lee in fourth for Ireland. The women's long jump won by Oksana Zubkovska for Ukraine. 
European champion for the first time to go with her three Paralympic and four world titles. Sara Martinez, the silver for Spain, and Anna Kanyuk medals again. It's bronze for her time for Belarus, edging out Sara Fernandez Roldan by one centimeter. Well, that morning flew. So we're back again at uh, 5.30, 17.30 Central European time. That's 4.30 in the UK and Ireland. It's 3.30 at GMT. It's 1.30 if you're in Greenland. Uh, Men's shot put F-34 to get us underway. 30 medals won by Russia so far. More golds than anyone else today. 16 titles Russia have taken, having missed the last Europeans in Berlin. 23 medals each for Ukraine and the host Poland. Ukraine with 11 titles. Great Britain with another gold today. And what a sensational triumph it has been too in the women's 100 meters T34. It was fab. France with 11 medals Netherlands with nine Fleur Young what a success in the T64 meters Iceland will be appearing on the board shortly Ireland with the uh, gold for Greta Stray Makita and Mary Fitzgerald's bronze Iceland with medals in the same event for the first time silver and a bronze fabulous we are back in six hours spend your time wisely We'll be back in five hours. Spend your time wisely. <laughs> Thank you.